have a really bad habit of having high-end European taste and a very small budget. So today we're gonna take these fiberglass uh, off the shelf Lowe's pots and turn them into French country relics. We're doing this all as a part of a summer collab. So check out the playlist below from all of our friends and business coaching members that are gonna be doing summer inspired videos. I think you're gonna find a lot of really great information and ideas. We've got amazing casting resin. I'm gonna use it to recreate an old mold that we pulled off of an antique that we picked up from a English salvage yard. For any of the paint and products that you see here today, you can pick them up at jamierayvintage.com if you wanna do similar projects for your own pieces. Okay, so side A, equal parts side B. Okay, this one is ready to demold. I'm just gonna peel it out here. I'm gonna glue these on probably about middle right here. I'm gonna use a lot of high temp hot glue to put these on. I don't think that'll be any issue going outside. We use high temp glue to make wreaths and all sorts of things. So I wanna make a brownish red color and I have carnival red and I'm gonna mix it with layered chocolate. I don't really care if it's perfect. The layer of chocolate is thick here. Yeah, this spoon. Has been, it's been around for a while. I'm hoping to make something in the terracotta family, but I actually don't really care what it is. It's just a base coat. I mean maroon. It's okay, it's gonna be a base coat. All right, so I'm gonna pour this out because it's not enough to fit the salt wash and stir without making a giant mess. I'm gonna add some salt wash. It's supposed to be a 50-50 ratio. I do a little less with DIY because DIY is so thick, it doesn't need quite that much. All right, here's the texture of my salt wash. I'm going to brush it on and Zeb is going to blade it. So this is like a darker terracotta, almost like a brick red, and I think it's gonna be a great base coat. When I come over the face, I'm gonna try to pull it out of the face because I don't wanna change all of the dimension of the face, but it has to be on there so that way the texture matches. I've got the IOD blade here, and this is the small one, comes in a couple sizes. And I'm gonna just go, we want it to be more of like a plaster type texture. And I'm gonna see if I can smooth some of this out and get those lines like it'd been put on with a trowel. So I just have to mix up some aviary, which is the perfect moss color with a 50-50 salt wash ratio. I'm gonna stipple it on my pot to make it look like an old mossy pot. That way when we layer over the next few colors, it's gonna be able to peek through and really give us that age and depth we're looking for. We want a light cement gray stone look on this, but we're all out of gravel road in DIY, so I'm mixing up old school with some white swan and we get pretty close to the look. Okay, so next we're gonna paint this gray color over the top, and this will get wet distressed back so we can see all the different layers, and then there'll be one more step after this. One more step. I keep saying, well, I mean one more paint step, maybe. Now that this gray is dry, we're gonna come back in with a damp rag, and we're gonna get it wet. I like to kind of soak the area first because it softens up the paint, and then we can pull this paint off and reveal all the layers below. This isn't gonna be the last step because it's going to have a white wash over the top, but I feel like we need to do this before the white wash so that way it can just kind of drip over the top. Careful not to overwork it because you can blend it. That will happen a little bit. So I'm coming back through. My rag is really dry and I'm just kind of getting any of the shiny spots where it may have blended a little bit and pulling that back. All right, I'm just gonna try to get it all wet and hose it down and see if that takes off some of the paint. Man, this paint is like on there for the duration. Yeah, white paint. And then you mixed it with salt wash. It's pretty sturdy stuff. I wanted to look like chunks had chipped off over time. So like right there, and there's a chunk right here. So while it was softened after I got it soaking wet, I just take my little uh, screwdriver here and scrape off chunks and wipe it off. So I just scraped off a chunk, scraped off a chunk, and I'm not going super deep. Um, let's see if I can find another area. So like right here, it's pretty thick. 
right? And I'm just like scraping off a piece there. And then I just come back and just kind of swipe at it. So it's not like, it doesn't look like just the edge of this. And you can get chips of the paint to come off. Don't worry. I'm just. Now we're just playing, more drains coming. Sometimes you have to experiment when you're in the middle of it. If it doesn't turn out how you want, you gotta keep going until you get to look. Well, I couldn't really get the green to come through. So now I'm just like sponging it on with a rag because there's too much red and not enough green. And I want the red to be like. Hopefully you don't get patterns. Oh yeah. Okay, so I added a little bit of this sea glass because we had it on hand to create a different color of green. It's just brighter. There's mine that doesn't have this green on there. You can see the difference between the two. And we're just building up layers because we saw some old urns online that we think were original from just being painted for a hundred years. And we're like, man, how do you recreate that? So that's what we're going for. And we might have to get five or six more colors on here, but mostly we're just mixing colors that we already have on hand. Yeah, it's a great way to use up odds and end paint. So I'm getting down in the detail with this gray I'm almost using it like a wax, but I'm wiping it back right away. So it's just sticking down like in the cracks. I needed some depth. She needed the magic of the gray. Her eye looks weird. Keep your painting at its finest. So I just want to do some, oops. <laughs> Good thing my phone's waterproof. <laughs> okay, so I'm just adding this like whitewash and I want it to drip down over the piece, not full coverage and I'm not brushing it back and forth. I'm just letting it go where it goes. It's very watered down. Um, and this is gonna let all the colors shine but make it look oxidized. Like it's been sitting out and the paint's been just, you know, running off of it. Because a lot of times when you find older pieces, that's kind of what's happened to them. But I don't want it to take away from all the color in the piece, which is why I've had to really water it down. It's probably like 20 to one. It's just the essence of white paint. We're gonna be sealing these with DIY Big Top. The sealer is not rated for outdoors, but that's okay. If these get weather and age, if they fade a little bit, that's all the better. It's really windy where we're at, so I'm just filling the bottom with cement to help give it some weight to hold it down. Now that the urns are out front, I'm like, they kind of look like I put apothecary on them, but I promise <laughs> there is no apothecary anywhere to be had on those urns. It was a lot of layers and a lot of playing around, just kind of working with the finish until we got it just how we wanted it to be. But it wasn't really that hard. It was just layers. Don't forget to check out the playlist in the description below. There's lots of Summer Vibes videos from all of our friends. You're not going to want to miss it. If you think we turned them into European salvage, comment below and let us know. If you have your own projects, be sure to hit up jamierayvintage.com. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.